Hello everyone, this is Dustin Cerny over at Fast Test, uh, the Director of Advanced Technology here, and today I'd like to give everyone an update on the new upgrades uh, in a little bit more in depth than we did last time, get into some of the history of how we got to where we are, talk about some high level industry 4.0, um, uh, things that are happening in the world, talk about some applications where we've implemented our new icon technology, uh, get into the benefits of these products and our updates and make sure we get into a good time of demos uh, and making sure everyone sees how easy it is to program these products and get them set up uh, and demonstrate them. And then a little bit of selling strategy at the end and how we make sure customers are, are qualified and understand the value that this technology provides them. Uh, as everyone knows <clears throat> and saw in the last uh, webinar, we've updated the branding to Icon Intelligent Connection Technology uh, and the feature names. Sure Seal is replaces connection verification and Seal Life is a new feature. Uh, we believe this new branding really hits home to our customers and the applications where these tools are used in. So let me get to the next slide here. Uh, for a little history, um, for those that haven't been around with this technology the last four years or so, uh, we really started with uh, a thought about putting a position sensor in our connectors and seeing what they could do with our CVO1 uh, iteration. Uh, for CVO2, we heard a little bit about uh, upgrading the termination, the electrical termination, and adding a PMP output. So, uh, really basic levels just to gain gauge interest. And we did get uh, a decent amount of interest out there, a lot of feedback that we're on the right track. Uh, but if you do a few more things and make a few more changes, we'll certainly start adopting that into our applications. Uh, and you know, a lot of customers, a lot of you distributors led us to CBO3 where we had a modular design uh, with an LED output. Uh, we added our analog output. We added this to our FastMate and ME configurations, and for the FIs, um, one of the mechanical feature upgrades was a stroke limiter, uh, so that seal doesn't get um, blasted off the tip of that product. So, um, number of upgrades, and it really highlights uh, what we're doing, listening to our customers, listening to you all, and defining where we go next. Uh, and so for CVO4, we've continued to do that. Um, added some multicolor LEDs to the platform. We'll get into some more of the new features and what they do and how they do a little bit later, so I don't want to get too in-depth here, but the main purpose of this is to let you know that uh, we're listening. And so if you have any other upgrade requests, any other product requests, please be sure to let myself or your RSM know. Um, we want to work those into our product roadmaps. Uh, so we're developing products and new products that are exciting and provide real value to our customers. So Industry 4.0, uh, the ongoing transformation of manufacturing systems combining with sensors, IoT connectivity, and data analytics technologies. Uh, many people believe it's been around quite a while, and you know I'm, I'm kind of one of those that have seen sensors used for a long time. Uh, the really new part is the IoT connectivity, the data analytics, to be able to you know push intelligence to the edge. Uh, there are a lot of new um, new things that have really changed the game in manufacturing to improve quality, uh, reduce the cost of quality, and make sure warranting claims are as low as they possibly can be. And that's really the space we play in is improving that quality. So um, you know. This is a technology that, that's coming, uh, it's still being adopted, uh, and those manufacturers that don't adopt it, we believe won't survive in the long run. Uh, so how fast do you guys see it getting adopted? This is an interesting poll I wanna try here, because uh, everyone has a different customer base and uh, customers are adopting at a different rate. If you can, please select one of our answers here, none, some, most, or all. Um, give it a little time here for everyone to, to drop an answer in here. And the way it's looking isn't too surprising to me. Um, 
Right now we're at 73% of 74% of some, most, or none. So some, that was really the expected answer that I thought would uh, win out here. It's all depending on the customer type that you're working with. Um, if, you're, if your customers are larger engine manufacturers, well certainly they have a lot of technologies and they're doing a lot of data collection. Um, if you work your way into smaller component suppliers, it's probably a, a little bit less. Um, you see those technologies adopted a little bit less. Uh, so thank you everyone for providing some answers. Uh, it's really interesting to see uh, that 15% are kind of check the most. Uh, that most of their customers are working towards um, this evolution and this industry 4.0 movement. So fast tests, uh, as a distributor of fast tests, you're part of uh, an industry leader in this in this movement. We're looking to collect data at the point of connection to improve applications and systems and. We believe they can provide a lot of value by doing so, and we're on our fourth iteration of this technology, but we're certainly uh, not stopping moving forward by adding different sensors and features to our product platform. So let's get into a little bit about why Icon, why, why would you want to sell this? Um, well. About two years ago, we went up on a head-to-head -head competition with uh, at Cummins, uh, the diesel engine manufacturer, and our technology program was uh, a big part of why we won that relationship. Uh, obviously, our, our sales team did a great job uh, managing that relationship, and we have sold a lot of standard products in there, uh, but we've now placed a set of our ICON-enabled connectors, a whole package that wrap an engine into their technology center. And so we're working hand in hand with them uh, moving forward to, to drive that adoption across all of their plants. Um, this is exciting to technology because it's something that nobody else has. Um, do you want to be selling something nobody else has or a commodity? Uh, this is a great way to get into different facilities. Even with the challenging times that we're having now, um, this is helping set up virtual meetings and demos, and uh, a lot of manufacturing engineers are very excited to look at this, uh, even if they don't have an application right then and there. Uh, so we have seen it adopted at many types of companies, um, Cummins obviously, Nissan, Jabil, uh, a big medical integrator, Graco, Hayward Industries, and Hutchinson. Uh, are a few of the bigger names, bigger customers, and we've shipped these products um, all over the world now, into China, into Mexico, into Canada, obviously U.S. Uh, so the companies that um, are on the forefront of Industry 4.0 or, or using PLCs to collect data and improve their systems are great fits for this technology, and they're the ones that are you know, adopting it as early adopters. Uh, one of the applications, I uh, just want to start high level here, is uh, a pump that uh, used oil. Um, and so the manufacturer was running a functional test on this, and they put a couple of standard fastmates into those two ports highlighted in red. Uh, and then they'd flip this pump around and rotate it around. It needed to be able to move during the functional test. And they didn't have the fastmate in there correctly, and if it was short connected, oil would be spilling all over as they pressurized it and moved that thing around and that would cause a 20 to 30 minute delay. It's a big safety issue. Uh, so they had a big problem on their hands and they adopted our FNP, our pneumatically actuated fastmate with analog output uh, and tied that directly into a PLC. So they locked out the test from starting until those connections were made properly. Uh, so it reduced the short connect occurrences uh, before the test started helped train the operators with the LED feedback, and they've eliminated you know nearly all of their oil spills. It's been eight months, and we haven't seen one happen. So a big big win for that team uh, and those engineers on that line that they were able to um, uh, sell up to their managers, and so big win for our technology and them as well. 
Another application where our MEs have been used is a uh, semi-automated medical device test. Uh, these are some good images. You can see that on the top, uh, there's our, our, FEO, our MEO1s, uh, eight of them, and then there's eight below. So they're sealing on two sides of a tube here. You can see that in the front image. Uh, and this integrator utilized, again, the analog outputs. Uh, they tied it into a PLC. They're watching the voltages and selecting their ranges of what's considered a good actuation. In the upper left, you can kind of see that screen that uh, everything's unconnected right there, so it shows red. So uh, pretty interesting. They really wanted to characterize the device, see how they worked over time. Um, it's a really unique setup, uh, obviously a delicate part, so they wanted to dial in uh, that seal with the lowest pilot pressure they could and make sure they had a good seal uh, on it. Now, obviously, with medical devices, Anytime they fail a test, well, not anytime, but most of the time when they fail a test, they have to throw that product out, uh, and they call it product scrap. So whether it's bad or not, whether it was a, a faulty product or just a bad connection, they throw it out, and they consider that waste. And so this technology really hits home to those medical suppliers um, to help reduce uh, their product scrap. So on to our technology. Um, as I mentioned earlier, SureSeal replaces connection verification. It's just instant LED feedback that verifies a good connection uh, prior to starting a leak test or a functional test or any fluid filling application. Uh, and the new feature, big new feature we've added is Seal Life. Uh, so it alerts when our FI or FE main seals are at end of life. We've done a lot of testing internally and, and found out that that's more a function of geometry of the connector and the piston travel. Uh, than anything else. Now, obviously, a um, seal could be cut or sliced or something, and this feature wouldn't pick that up, but this is more like uh, your gas tank light on your car. As your gas tank runs low, you'll get a light that says you better fill it up uh, within 50 miles, otherwise you're going to be in trouble. And the same thing goes for our seal light feature. So the benefits of our technology is that it improves safety during functional tests. Uh, Short seal prevents any short connect situations before media and pressure is introduced. Obviously, in high pressure applications with our fast mates, that's a, that's a very big benefit. Um, this eliminates false failures, so you're improving your first pass of yield. Uh, one of the engine facilities that we work with mentioned that they have an 8% um, failure rate uh, due to connections. So they'd fail an engine then go do a troubleshooting to see what's wrong with it and didn't find anything wrong. They call it a no fault found. Uh, and so 8% out of 500 engines a day adds up pretty quickly. And we'll get into you know, how much that costs them over the course of the year uh, a little bit later. So obviously we're increasing throughput, reducing downtime, getting consistency in your actuations, uh, isolating their products to make sure they're testing their products and not the system around it. Uh, being able to collect tool data, gathering historical use, actuation, cycle counts, uh, they learn a lot more over time. Integrators have really seen the value of that, being able to support their systems and machines uh, that are in the field. And Seal Life op uh, optimizes the seal maintenance. So I think that's one of the biggest uh, customer-led features that we've added. Every time I'd go around to a customer and ask, well, how do you... How do you know when to change seals? And most of them throw up their hands and say, well, we're lucky if we have a, a preventative maintenance program. Uh, otherwise, they see 10 failures in a row, and then their operators know to, to change it. And so those 10 failures in a row can add up uh, pretty significantly over time. So uh, this feature was really led by our customers um, in, in trying to improve the maintenance of our products. Here's a quick system overview and how the different colors are used, and we'll get into the demo here very shortly. Uh, but we have green, which is still a good in, good connection. Yellow now represents over travel or a potential short connect. You can see the pistons travel a little bit farther. Our main, our, our red is the worn seal alert. Uh, we've learned that when this piston slides all the way out and reaches its maximum limit. Um, that's when seals start to wear. No more force is applied to the seal. So that's kind of the unique innovation that we realized. So 
that's a separate programming point uh, and kicks on when that piston starts to get that far. And we'll, we'll get into it with the demo. That's a little bit easier to understand it than me just telling you. Uh, and then we've added a white light to our uh, solid state relay outputs that allows the users to signal an operator to use a specific tool. So in multi-connector systems and setups, where multiple products are coming down a line in different sizes, where they need to use different connections, this is a way to immediately alert the operators to use the right tools for that product. So pretty cool little feature that was dropped in. Uh, we still have our programming tool, it's been updated a little bit. It's only for the, the one type of output, uh, the solid state relay output, and we'll get into that in, in a second. Uh, but that's still available, uh, so users can set this up as a standalone system, or they can use it and tie it into a PLC. So this, these features are available for a multiple, multiple products in our portfolio, and we're looking to add more continually. Uh, actually working on our 60s and 70s right now, so uh, you might see that coming later this year. But we've got our FI, our FE, our ME, and our FN available right now. And another new product that was uh, recently launched is our FIG SOPO, uh, which means spring on, pressure off. So in its natural state is connected. A uh, really safe and secure product for large castings and larger diameter surfaces where uh, that when that pressure increases, the forces really increase that try to eject that out of the port. So um, we have this available for those products. Uh, the seal life feature, uh, and this is what the chart represents, is only available for the FIs, FEs, and MEs. The FNs, uh, we still can't pick up exactly when that seal is worn just by the, the piston travel difference. So keep that in mind as you're talking to your customers. And so the other updates to the product line uh, are pretty, pretty impressive. We did this in about eight months, but uh, NPN and PMP outputs are combined into one solid state relay output. So the customers can configure the desired output on site, either a solid state relay, NPN, or PMP. You have a full color LED now, so you can see multiple states, whether it's connectors on, We'll show you that in a second. Whether well, it's a good connection, whether it's over traveled, our seal life indicator, and select tool. So uh, they can do a lot with uh, this type of technology. For our analog output, it has a controllable LED, and they can choose red, yellow, or green options. Uh, we've updated the pinout to a six pin uh, M8 termination and industry preferred wiring. The circuit board is much more robust. Uh, we've added reverse polarity protection, and you can wire it, miswire it any which way, and it's not going to burn up on you. So uh, we did have that happen a few times in the field, and so that's much improved for the CBO4 iteration. Uh, the analog board height mounts flush with the back of the connectors, so that doesn't stick out longer, and we got a lot better resolution on that signal, uh, so it provides greater accuracy on that piston travel measurement. So again, um, NPN and PMP are now solid state relay. Um, they can be wired in three ways. So this provides a little bit more flexibility in order processing and for on-site field integration. Our user manuals, uh, which are included in the handout section here on uh, the GoToWebinar, if you want to download those right now, those are available for you. Uh, they have all the wiring and programming information that you need. So I'd like to get into some demos here. I'm going to turn on the camera here, kind of bounced around on me, so I'm going to have to zoom in. Make sure you guys can see this. Oh, going the wrong way. Okay. So I think the first thing you'll notice is that blue flashing light. Uh, that is to show that the tools are on. Uh, pretty simple feature, but it was something that our customers requested. They couldn't tell uh, if they were on or, or wired up properly or not. Uh, so now you see uh, this blue flashing light. So 
So simple little addition, but a nice improvement to the line. Uh, and as you go through this, I'm just going to actuate the FastMate. Uh, there's a little flashing yellow and then a solid yellow, which lets you know you're fully extended and you can drop it into your product. Let it go, and we get the green indicator that I made a good connection. Now, let's say I cross-thread it or do something that's, that's not right. It's going to stay yellow. If I short connect it, pretty obvious short connect situation. Kind of hard to see on the camera, but uh, I don't get my response. I just get the blue flashing light. So really good for training new operators. And I've got this tied in with our programming tool. Uh, so you can see how easy it is to set off, but basically wire the two ends of the cables and plug it into power, and away we go. Now, programming uh, is a little different. Before we just hold this button uh, for two seconds, and that puts you into calibration mode, but now that we have that controllable LED, uh, holding the button just makes it light up white. Uh, so this can also be mimicked with a PLC applying 24 volts to one of the pins in here. So to enter programming mode now, we press this button four times uh, pretty quickly. And you can see it enters a green uh, flashing mode. So for the Fastmates, to set the first point, uh, it's always at rest. We've kind of pre-programmed where to put it. You hold it for two seconds, it'll begin flashing again. Uh, and then you bring this out here so the calls line up with that inside surface on the bottom and hold it again for two seconds. So now I've recalibrated the connector. And we've got green. Cross threading, stays yellow. Kind of hard to see on the camera. But pretty simple device, this is a really great tool. I'm excited about what this can do uh, for our customers uh, and how it can be used. Now I want to get into our, our FI products over here, and this is a, a demo kit that's available to you, and many of you might have seen this for the CBO3 versions. Um, and I should have this programmed, so if I uh, put on this part here, actuate it out, uh, it says it's good, I can start my test. Uh, you can see the, the green LED response. Got a little pressure relief valve back there. Uh, and let's say somebody short connects it, does something like this hanging off a little bit, uh, it goes yellow. And I don't know if you can see that, but this is a, it could be a dangerous situation. It could cause a leak path and a failed test. Um, so we're able to pick that up now, even with our um, you know standard discrete type output here with solid state relay. Uh, and I'm gonna put on uh, another tube that's got a red highlight on it, and I've programmed that to mimic our piston travel. Uh, you can see as it comes out, uh, it's pretty, wobbly on here and it's going to stroke towards the end of that piston travel and then leds go red uh, so that's what we've realized in our testing as this reaches that maximum limit all the way out that's when uh, it starts to leak no more force gets applied to that seal so the users can customize where they want uh, the red light to come on uh, let's Try to do that without any parts on there and actuate it through. You can see the good green zone, over travel in yellow, and then even farther out red. And that's basically at my maximum limit. And that's what we've learned with these connectors over time. The seals kind of wear away material and it strokes farther and farther each time. Uh, so users do need to kind of watch where their limits are set, and that's where the analog output provides a lot of value with PLC integration. Uh, you can set revolving averages that, that adjust over time and learn about that piston creep. Uh, so it's really unique uh, to use that with a PLC and the analog output. There's a lot, lot you can do with that, and we'll uh, try to put together a video where we're showing more of that uh, pretty soon here. So programming this, uh, it's again kind of the same. Let's actuate it out to where we want to start our limit. Uh, again, press the teach button or apply a voltage four times and it goes into this slow flashing mode. I'm going to hold this for two seconds and it'll begin flashing a little bit faster when we have our 30 second window. Uh, 
to now set a second point, actuate it all the way out, and it'll flash at me to let me know that I've set that uh, second point, that B point. Now the worn seal alert is set a similar way. I'm going to put on where I want that set, this pretty large board out tube, uh, and we recommend that customers get some sort of static tubes or gauge pins for our FEs, so we're setting these fairly consistently. Uh, and again, go into the calibration mode. You'll see the green flashing. Uh, and then we just hold this. It's going to slow flash, and when it starts blinking a little bit fa faster, about 10 seconds later, now you can see that. Now we've set our worn seal alert limit. And so that worn seal alert limit overrides uh, the, the green features. Uh, and so as you can see on the charts in the presentation, um, I'm going to turn the webcam off to make sure we're all looking at those charts again. You can see that A and B point are user set and then the worn seal alert. Uh, they could set this B point all the way out near that worn seal alert setting. Uh, they don't need to set a worn seal alert if they don't want to use it. You can still set just an A point and have a green zone all the way through. So there's a lot of different ways you can set this up depending on what they're trying to get out of it. Uh, and on the right, you can see the uh, FastMate graphs in response. Obviously, there's no worn seal alert, so there's no red uh, response. These demo kits are available, so please contact your RSMs for availability. Um, we're able to upgrade any FN kits that are out in the field, but the FI kits uh, need to come back to us. But please contact us. We want to make sure you're able to demo this. We're doing a lot of virtual demos these days, uh, and they still show up pretty well on camera, as you've seen. So the big value with this is that it saves a lot of time and money. There's a lot of steps when you're not using the ICON technology, uh, and you're able to create standard work, prevent false failures, and improve reliability and safety. So how do I highlight the value when I'm speaking with a customer? Well, I ask a lot of qualifying questions. What is your test time? What is your first pass yield? How often do you have a failed test due to a seal? You know, what happens when you have a false failure? Um, we we're at a cylinder manufacturer that uh, would do a leak test, and if they got a failure, they'd go and dunk the cylinder to see where the leak was coming from. Uh, and a lot of times they'd see that it's just coming from the connection point, and they'd have to pull it out, dry it off, and rerun that uh, air leak test. So that, that was a considerable amount of waste on their end when they had a false failure. How often do you see short connects with standard Fastmates? Uh, what is the cost of your product at this stage? Uh, does every minute of production time matter? I'm really trying to gauge how, um, you know, their level of Six Sigma, uh, their level of lean, are they watching every minute, does it matter? Um, if this line that is only producing 50 parts a day or 30 parts a day and they're, they, they have the time and there isn't that much urgency, um, sometimes these types of technologies aren't a good fit. Uh, and that's okay. We really want to target the right customers where this is a fit, where they are going to value it. And that's usually in the higher dollar products, the more complex products, uh, and the ones that are a little bit more higher volume. Another good question is, do you get charged for cost of quality uh, for a failed test? There was a manufacturer actually locally in Minnesota. Uh, their engineers would get charged $53 every time they had a failed test, no matter what it was. So this, uh, that was a metric that they got uh, incentivized on, and so this, was, this technology is a great way to help reduce that cost of quality. Um, as I mentioned, there was an engine manufacturer that, that we ran into that had an 8% first pass yield failure rate or no fault found rate. Uh, and let, this little chart kind of highlights if 80% of those failures were due to connections and could have been avoided, uh, over the course of a year, uh, with a rework time of 12 minutes, which is probably low, considering they'd send that engine to a secondary bay. So I'm going to have to start investigating it and, and looking at the different systems and retesting. Uh, we estimate at a $750 production cost an hour that that costs them about $1.2 million a year. So when you 
build this value case for your customers. They get to un they start to see why this is important to their production lines and how much money it can save them. So it's good to get into the habit of walking them walking them through this. Uh, it's amazing how many engineers will say, "Oh yeah, well that happens to us every now and then." But when you add up every now and then over the course of the year, it can be quite costly. Uh, and our technology is a lot less expensive than $1.2 million a year, uh, or even $100,000 a year when you're at a, a uh, component manufacturer level. So I think that's all I've got today. Um, again, the handouts, the brochure, and the operating instructions are, are listed here. Please make sure to grab them. Uh, ask your RSM for any other support materials that you're looking for. And uh, please let us know if you need a PowerPoint or any other information or videos. Um, we'll kind of flip through those past slides. Uh, these are the questions that we asked. And this was an ROI calculator that we put together. Uh, so again, if you have any other questions, please let myself know or your RSM. We want to make sure you're successful with this technology. I know it can be uh, a little bit different if you're used to selling mechanical products or pneumatic products uh, when the electronics are involved. Uh, there's always some different questions that come up. Uh, so please don't hesitate to ask us for support. Uh, we're here and available. Uh, and I wish everyone good luck. And let's go out and sell some Icon products. Pretty excited for the rest of this year. Uh, so thank you for your time and hope everyone has a great week.